thank you for everything you've done in our lives. Thank you, Lord. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a
do it for you. That's There's right. a song written on your heart only you can sing. Yes. Thank you. And when you sing, enemies flee. Yes. Yes. I'm when you it. sing, prison walls come falling Thanks. down. Thank you, Jesus. When you sing, heaven invades the earth. So just begin to lift up your hallelujah. Jesus, because you are the victory in our lives, and we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the
Sing it. 
something with you too nothing critical on this song but I just heard your history has been rewrote he's rewriting my his, my destiny no it's already been written come on it's, all, it's already been determined the victory has been won now you do by the rewriting of your words on what he has done you rewrite your history See, because God has a plan for you, and it's good. It's blessed. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man who hearkens to the voice of the Lord his God. See, God's got it written out, and, caught, and through the blood of Christ, it was sealed. We have a covenant. See, David was anointed to be king. Twenty years later, he stood in the office. But that didn't make him a king then. It made him a king when God anointed him and said, this will be the man. That's when history, that's when his history was rewritten. And David had to walk it out, amen, with persecutions. He had to, he had to get that line, and he was trying to come after his sheep. He was watching his daddy's sheep. He said, uh-uh, I'm king. <laughs> See, that, that lion says, I'm the king of the jungle. No, I'm the king of God. I'm God's king, anointed king here on the earth. And David knew I have authority over this lion. Amen. He remembered the covenant in, the, in Genesis. You have authority, Adam. Well, Adam wasn't there. <laughs> Adam wasn't there to keep the sheep from being devoured. But David was. See, it was David's time. I'm telling the church, it's your time. It's our time. David had his time. He ruled and reigned as king, anointed by king. But he's in heaven. He's still king in heaven. Jack, he's still king in heaven. He's not the king of kings, but God made him a king over Israel. God has made us kings and priests through the new covenant to him. King and priest unto God. There's none higher than Jesus. He's king of kings. But he has put us in that priesthood. What? By the blood. I said by the blood. Every born again believer is a king and priest unto God. And you want to rewrite the history? Speak it and declare it. Amen. God's word. His covenant word. Amen. Because see the devil's not just going to give you his stuff. You're saying the devil's got stuff? Yeah, because of the transgression. He's the God, the little, the devil. He's the little G of this world until we declare to him, I'm king of this earth through Christ Jesus, through the blood. Until you make that decree, your history, he's going to come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what the devil's going to come to do. But that's when you got to rise up as the king. Amen. In your house, in your life, say, no, no, no. I have a covenant. Don't be Saul's army that were hiding all them words. The big old giant out there over nine foot tall decreeing and declaring, give me a man to come out here and fight me. Everybody just, even King Saul, and he was the tallest one in Israel, hiding until David, a shepherd boy, came and what? Heard Faith comes by hearing. And when David heard those words from Goliath cursing God and, the, and all the Israelites, he said, is there not a cause? That spirit of faith hit him on the inside. He said, my God, I, I, I protected my father's sheep out in, the, out in the wilderness. And this uncircumcised Philistine that don't have a covenant is going to de defy the armies of God? David said, there's a cause. That anointing gives you a cause. <laughs> the Holy Ghost gives you a cause to stand up, not cower down. Come on. Today is a good day. Amen. And every day can be a good day. But you've got to determine because God made this day. It's a good day. Amen. 
Sunday's not just a day to come to church. We are the church. This is just a day we set aside. Amen. And we're going we're gonna to receive an offering this morning. Why? Because we believe God. We believe his promises. And he says it's better to give. It's be- actually better to be a blessing. More blessed to give than to receive. Jesus, his whole ministry was about giving. About being a blessing. Amen. Matthew 17. Matthew 17, 24 through 27. Concerning your tithes and offerings this morning. And just talking about your history has been rewritten. I didn't say this in uh, the steps of a good man or order of the Lord. God doesn't tell you all the steps at one time. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Just take one step at a time, what he tells you to do. Amen. And just do that, what? With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And then God will show you another step. Because he's not going to give you another order. He's not going to give you step two until you finish step one. Amen. David was anointed to be king, but it wasn't time. He was still, God was still showing his mercy to King Saul. But there's a time to where when you, if you reject God, God rejects you. That point came to where Saul rejected the orders of the Lord. He didn't do it the right way, but David had a heart after God. Just submit to God's way. God said, bring ye all the, bring ye all the tithes oh, I like, and offerings unto the house of the Lord. Why? Why? Tell me, Pastor, why? So there'll be meat in your house. You like to eat hamburger? You like to eat meat? You like to eat? Just take off the meat. So that, Not so God needs meat. We need it. That ought to be enough for you to give right there. Amen. I tell you what, my kids, they know we like to eat on vacation. My God, we're going to go, good. We're going to go get some steak dinner, and then we're going to go watch a movie and have some popcorn, and then you're going to stop at the Krispy Kreme? My God, Daddy. Yes, son. <laughs> Why? Vacation. Tradition. Amen. Didn't make it to the Krispy Kreme while they closed. The movie ran too long. But I said, there's another day coming. I forget what day it was, but we made it to the Krispy Kreme. Amen. It was kind of late in the week because we brought the boxes home two days after. (laughs) Well, I tell you what, Jesus brought it home. Amen. He brought victory. He brought us home. I tell you what, the light's always on. That Krispy Kreme, the hot light was off. That didn't change it. (laughs) Amen. Jesus, he's always on, Terry. It don't matter how bad you've missed it. We've missed it. He's always on. He never leaves. He never forsakes. He's there to bless us. Matthew 17, 24, 27. It says, when they were come to Capernaum, these are the disciples walking with Jesus. They that received tribute money came to Peter. Boy, I'd be glad they didn't go to Jesus. Jesus would have told them, what if? <laughs> right then. <laughs> They came to Peter and said, well, see, why, why can't people just come and ask you? Why do they want to talk behind your back? The Bible tells us if you've got a problem with your brother, what do you do? Go to your brother. Don't go to somebody else. You know what I mean? God, don't, don't go to your brother. They went to Peter and said, does not your master pay tribute? Why didn't they go to Jesus? They knew he would have told them the truth. They didn't want to hear that. <laughs> does your master pay tribute? Peter said, Yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of who do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? The kings of the earth. Of their own children or of strangers? Peter said, Of course, a king's not going to take money from his kids. He's going to take money from the strangers. That's what kings do. They tax the people, but their, their family's probably not taxed, right? They got benefits. They know the king. But Peter said, yes, surely, Lord, the the strangers. Jesus said unto him, then are the children at the house, are they free? See, Jesus is taking something deep here to say to Peter. But Jesus said, 
notwithstanding, because he knew they wouldn't, they wouldn't understand what he was talking about right now. It was spiritual. Lest we should offend them, go to the sea. What did Peter used to do before he met Jesus? He, he, was, a work, he was a professional fisherman. That work, ain't it, Leo? Work! So he's telling him, go to work, Peter. <laughs> go out here. But you're not going to toil this time. Go. Peter loved fishing. That's what he... See, you ought to love what you do. And you even get paid for it. That's work. Nothing wrong with that. If you're doing what God's called you to do, you should love it. Go to the sea, cast a hook, and take up the fish that cometh up. And when you open his mouth, you shall find, say, money. God's got money on his mind. Why? Because you're on his mind. And God knows you need money. What? You got to pay taxes. Am I lying? Am I saying the truth? God knows. You don't think God knows you? Uh, king's going to make us pay taxes? Caesar's still making us pay taxes? But do we pay tithes? No. We give tithes. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because we free. Amen. I don't care what Caesar says, what decree he makes, we still free. We pay our tithes and then we, you know, we pay taxes, but we give our tithes. First, amen. First thing. <laughs> take that piece of money and take it and give unto them and for me and for thee. It wasn't just enough for Jesus, it's enough for Peter. Amen. So see, what you do for God, you need to expect more for your family. Because you're helping God. You build the kingdom. God's going to, if you, if you make your number one priority, seek his kingdom and do what he calls you to do, he's going to make his number one priority to bless you. And I love, I love the revelation God gave me on the tithe. God asked for a tenth, but what does, he ta- what does Jesus tell us if you give uh, what you get back? 30, 60, well, you can get a hundredfold back on your, on your, on your seed. Amen. So if I tithe 10%, God will give me a hundredfold back. And tithes and offerings, but just think, that's a pretty good deal. God's out to bless us. Amen. Let's stand. He is out to bless us. And he's good at his job. God's good at what he does. I tell you, I can bless you in certain ways, but I can't bless you the way God can bless you. So won't you let him do it? Don't say God's a hard man. He, he asks 10%. No, say, God is my father. And what he asks, what he orders me to do, I'm going to do it. And be blessed. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, as our church gives, as your family gives, as your people give. That, Lord, you said, give and it's going to be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men's going to come looking to bless us. Why? Because that's what the blood cries out. It cries out covenant. And, Lord, you're faithful. So we thank you as we give, you're faithful to give back to us, and we receive it today. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Bring your tithes and offerings freely and worship the Lord. When the music fades, all is stripped away. And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's worth That will bless your heart I bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have Oh
Jesus step by step. If you're not, get back in step. <laughs> don't, don't get under condemnation. Get under the blessing. Follow Jesus. Come here, Terry. Stand up here with me a minute. Just an illustration. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm going to put you on the spot, but I'm not going to require anything other than the orders I'm going to give you. Come on, come up here. Come. See, see, a lot of times I thought following was, okay, Terry, get behind me. You follow, you follow me. Jesus said, follow me. Can I see Terry? Can I see Terry following me? So let's go back to the camera, just for the camera's sake. You look better on camera. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Now, take, take, my, take my arm. Okay. Now, follow me, Terry. Jesus said, follow me. What? Hand in hand. hand, in hand. Where he goes, Lord, you go. You go. Amen. Amen. And, I, and Jesus God. never never leaves. That's right. So wherever you are, he's right there. He's following you. That means miracles are following you. Healings, prosperity, finances. You just sowed into the kingdom financially. Finances are following you down to chase you down. Why? Jesus is with you. You remember at his birth, who came looking for him? Wise men. Didn't say three, did it? Did it? The scriptures don't say three. A lot of times it was caravans, right? <laughs> Just watch the movies. You watch some of them old movies. But they were bringing something. Can somebody tell me what was the first thing they were bringing? What was the second thing? And the third thing. Should we forget the first? Okay. Don't forget the gold. Amen. Why? That was coming to Jesus. Jesus is following me. He's still the ruler. He's got all the, all the cows and, and what's that, all the cattle on a thousand? 
is his. God don't need the cows. If you are hurt, I, I like to eat beef. We need the cows, amen. The cattle, we need them. So don't reject them. Don't reject the blessing, amen. If God wants to bless you and he, 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 he doesn't stop, he says, what they could, he'll bless them abundantly above all they could. God says, ask. God says, I can do better. If you ask, Terry, he's going to do abundantly above all that you could ask. But what do I got to do? Orders. Steps of the Lord are ordered. Good man's are ordered. What? Ask. That's going to be next week's message. If I'm not asking, God's not entitled to do abundantly above all that I. If you don't say nothing, he can't do abundantly above all that you. <laughs> so a lot of times I hear, you know, unspoken requests. No, request it openly. <laughs> so God can reward you secretly. Ain't that? See, that's God. I don't go, have to go shout it to the housetop unless he tells me to. Come on, unless he tells me to. There's certain times he said, now go take this gospel and what? Preach it to the world. It takes finances, right? So as, you're, as, you, as you give and we take the word, you're being a blessing to the kingdom. And God wants to bless you abundantly above all that you could ask or think because what you're thinking of him first. Thinking of the kingdom first. Amen. Let's get our confession up. We're thinking of the kingdom so don't let the devil think that when you ask him, you shouldn't be. We need to be asking until he comes. Because he said occupy until he comes. Amen. Occupy until he comes. Father, we thank you. Father God, in heaven, we thank you today that according to your word, your word speaks, a, the blood speaks a better word. The covenant speaks a better word. According to your covenant, Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 11, we're getting our lands and our places of employment. All of our debts are being eliminated and will owe no man nothing but the debt to love one another. Today we claim our great and goodly cities, all of our houses full of good things, our vehicles and all the equipment and the people that we need. Why? To preach and teach the word of faith to the world to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. People, He's coming. Jesus is coming again. And we need to be ready now, today. This is the day. Now the Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. That was, that was made when Jesus read that scripture today. This scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Jesus is the only one that could fulfill that scripture. He was talking about the year of Jubilee and all debts, past, present, and future were forgiven. Jesus said, today it's fulfilled, the year of Jubilee. So we don't, even though it's good to keep that, the Jews, I like the way they do that. All debts are forgiven every 50 years, right? Every 50 years. But Jesus don't come back to the cross every 50 years. <laughs> he done it once and for all. So we have Jubilee every day. Jesus is the Jubilee. The sin debt is completely forgiven. And the blood not only just, he didn't just cover my sin, Jen. The Bible says he washed my sin as far as the east is from the west. Only the blood of the lamb could do that. So the sin debt, the curse debt has been washed away. That's been rewritten. Jesus rewrote it and he's the only one that can rewrite my history. And my history was forgiven, forgotten. My sin history, my sin debt. Now when Jesus sees, when the Father looks at me, He looks, when I get born again, see that's the key. You, you got to get born again. You can't even understand or see the kingdom. Jesus told Nicodemus and he knew the word. He knew the law, but he didn't know Jesus. He didn't know that new covenant yet because it was just now being established. Thy kingdom come. You know, that's a good prayer to, to set your faith in and grip, but thy kingdom has come. Jesus was setting a principle for us to pray. Now pray to the Father in my name. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. When Sherry writes a check, it's a joint checking account. My name's on the account. She don't have to have me there to write that check. Amen? Why? Because I'm in agreement with her. She's mine and I'm hers. <laughs> What's mine is hers and what's hers is mine. 
Sometimes she make a little bit more than me, but it's mine. Amen. So it's mine too. So I used to have a problem with that when I wasn't born again. My wife made more money. Well, actually, I didn't really have a problem because I made less. I just kind of let her work. I'd come home for rain and play some video games. I worked in construction, so I didn't have no, I couldn't go out and work in the rain, but my wife was still working. She inside. This is before Jesus. Come on. I'm taking y'all back a little bit. Was I under conviction? Did I feel bad that she was out working? I was home playing Nintendo. Nah, man, I had more time on that game. But thank you. My wife out there making the money. Making. She was the hit. When she, would, her, she made more than I did. I just sat them down the south. But when Christ came, I learned about a covenant. <laughs> Amen. God's no respecter of person, but he set things in order. Jesus the head, and then a, a, a husband and wife, the husband's the head of that home. In other words, he's the protector. Doesn't mean the woman can't work, if that's her decision, but he's the head, he's the covering, he's the one that, that protects. Well, I wasn't even doing that, let alone, I, I didn't even feel guilty about her working and me not being home. But when the, when the covenant changed and I got in and found out, oh man, I was supposed to be the head, I was the tail, Jim. I was the tail. But see, we wasn't born again. I didn't know all this stuff. I didn't know this word. But when I found out I was the head and got in line, got in order, things changed for the better. My wife was able to train. We started having, we, we had Kelsey. She was four. We wasn't saved yet. So we was paying for child care. And that's okay. But that wasn't the best care. See, my, my wife was working. She'd get home later than me. I got off, but... And I tell you what, I've changed diapers many times, four babies. My wife has a little bit better anointing for that <laughs> than I do. I, didn't, I wouldn't say she's better at it, but I, if it was time to change and she didn't ask me to do it, I let her do it. She's quicker. I got pretty fast at it. It's an aroma. I don't like the smell. I get fast at it. Get rid of that smell quick. They had a thing called a diaper genie. Do I need to go that far back? Y'all remember the diaper genies? See, my grandma and my mama probably used cloth diapers on me. They had a diaper genie. Now, I think this might have been before Christ, but I think I can share this. You, you take that diaper and what up, instead of putting it in a trash can, you put in this little diaper genie and you push the thing and it would zip tie it. It would tie it. And <laughs> y'all ever seen that? I don't know what y'all call it. Pastrami. You know how it's kind of tied links, like sausage links, and they were tied together. Remember the cartoons? They'd eat them link. Well, they, that's the way that diaper roll came out, Jim. It wasn't just in one big bag. It, they was rolled, and when you take them out, they just all kind of linked together. Why am, I, y'all, why am I telling y'all this? I don't know. But it took care of that smell, and it wrapped it up, and it sealed it so that aroma couldn't get out in the house. And then depending on how, how, big, a, how big a diaper genie you got, then you, roll, then you put them in a trash bag and go throw them away. What was I talking about before I got on that? I was talking about the anointing. Wasn't I? <laughs> God's got you wrapped up, Randy. <laughs> he, got you, he, he sealed you with the Holy Ghost. Not because you, you, you're putting off a bad aroma. It's because the devil don't like to smell you, but I don't care. See, because God gave you life. That's a good aroma. When he seals you, that's sweet aroma. The devil don't like our smell, but guess what? Tough. Amen. We smell good. What you did is an offering goes up and it's a sweet smelling aroma, aroma to the Lord. Not what you did for him. And he breathes in and he's going to blow the blessing on your finances out. Amen. He'll give you the desires of your heart. But you need to ask. Rowan didn't ask. He's getting ready to go to college. Southeast Community College, I think, down there in Whiteville. He's going to play some baseball. Main thing, he's going to get an education, figure out his destiny, his purpose. He's going to be away from mom and dad, and the Holy Ghost is going to speak to him loud. Amen, because that's what I'm praying. Because a lot of times, that's when you'll hear God's voice. It's when you get away from a lot from a noise. Isn't that right, Jim? Get away from a lot of the noise that you're used to. And God can still speak. Don't get me wrong, but it's when you get away, and you're kind of away from those familiar things just taking care of you, and now you're taking care of yourself, and you're kind of missing mom and dad's voice. What you want to eat, son? What you want for supper? Or y'all bringing me something to eat? Well, we ain't going to be there to bring him nothing to eat. He's going to have to, what? He's going to have to go get him something. Amen? Now, we're still going to help him provide. You know what I mean? But he's got to, 
We're not going to be there. But Jesus said, I'll never leave them. I take care of your kids where they go. We went, we went and looked at the place he's going to be at. You, know, you want to check the neighborhood out, man. See what's going on. See where your family's going to be. It's going to be a nice little place. It's going to be God's place. Amen. We trust in God that the angels are there. God's out to protect us, to bless us. It don't matter where we are. He's there. Amen. So we're going to bless him, but I think it was the, when we go to the beach, you know, you got to unpack everything. You're tired, especially if you just drove <laughs> five or six suitcases. Oh, you towed everything upstairs and you're tired. But then you got to go to Walmart or wherever you get, you got to go get something to eat. Unless you got some really good people that leave you behind a stock refrigerator, but they don't do that at the beach. You know, you bring your own food, you take your own food. That's the rules, amen? So we got to go shopping. I go push buggies and follow Sherry and Kelsey. Follow me. Follow. And, then when I, and they definitely want me to follow them because I get to the front, pay the woman. <laughs> Credit card. So, yeah, but, and then, and then after that, we didn't get everything because we wanted to go, go, go eat and rest. So we went back a second time. But this time, I'm sorry, we went to, we went to a, food store and then we go back to Walmart and we go to the electronics section. I'm like, what am I going to eat back here? Why am I following? Why, why you? I went to the restroom and meet us in electronics. I'm like, I didn't ask them, but I'm asking myself, what am I going to eat in the electronics section? A, I don't know. It wasn't real big. A 40, 35 inch smart TV. <laughs> oh, I know who this is for. Rowan's College. He's gonna have a you know a TV in his in his apartment, but there wasn't but one TV at the beach, and you got two kids playing, two brothers playing PlayStation Four. So my wife was going to be a blessing, early blessing. Go ahead and get the TV set up in that room. Rowan can have his. Dallas can play his, and then that goes to the apartment. Rowan didn't ask for it, Randy. He didn't ask for it. Parents blessed him. I see parents thinking that's God. That's the Father. But sometimes you got to ask. Amen. You might get it quicker. <laughs> Amen. If Rowan would have asked, he probably got it quicker. Amen. Oh, he was happy when he saw that coming in. Who's that for? Didn't seem the rest of the week. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? In the room. It, he loves to fish. He was on the pier up there fishing. In the, I don't fish in the daytime. It's hot at the beach. I'll go when the sun, when it's setting about 7 o'clock down there. So they closed the pier at 10, so you got to get out and, and get your fishing done. Peter loved the fish. But Jesus said, Peter, I know you love the fish, but I need you to fish for something else. Souls, Peter. Jesus said, I'm not always going to be here. I'm, I got to leave. My time is short. I got to find me some disciples. Amen. A disciple is not just a convert. You get born again. Jesus said, go make disciples, not converts. People that love what? Love the Word. Love to study. Love to get into the Word. That's what God's looking for. Hungry people. Hungry Christians every day. Hungry for the Word. Are you hungry for the Word this morning? Get hungry, man. Sometimes that means you got to starve your flesh of what you really like and get hungry for the Word. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word that's going to come forth today, Lord. Your Word. Your promises. And we just open up our heart to receive it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. All that was just extra this morning. <laughs> short sermon. Now, wait a minute now. You my teacher. <laughs> I don't remember. Kelsey, you remember any short sermons? <laughs> I, I remember Jim in a, in a pair of shorts sometimes. That's about as close as he got to a short sermon. <laughs> That's when he was at the beach. He, he sent us some pictures when he go to the beach. Him and Wanda out there. But I tell you what, if Jesus wept, that's a sermon. Two words, Jesus wept. Why did he weep? His buddy was dead, man. Lazarus was dead. Jesus is the author. Jesus is life. Jesus don't like death. He don't like dead things. He likes things to be alive, amen? Jesus wept. That was his soul weeping. You know, we weep when our loved ones that we love depart. 
If they're, born, if they're born again, they're just departing to heaven. But if they don't know Jesus, they're departing forever in hell. And we don't want that. That's why we, that's why we study the word and, and ask the Lord to help us be a witness to those that are lost. Amen. There's a lot of lost people out there right now that think they're okay with God, but they're not. That's why God's sending us, discipling us. Amen. We're the bait. Amen. We're the bait that Jesus uses to go find some fish. Don't be old smelly shrimp left in a bucket overnight at 90 degree temperature bait. I'm talking about some of the Rowing fish, but he forgot to bring the shrimp in and put it in the freezer. I opened up the cooler, getting ready to come home. I, that cooler stayed at Ocean Isle Beach in the trash can. I, I buy another cooler. Be good bait that people like to eat. Amen. Bring some good news. They know sinners. Let me tell you. Let me give you a little tip. Sinners know they're sinning. Jesus knows they're sinning. But that didn't stop him from going and preaching good news to him. The good news is you don't have to stay in that sin. You can get born again. Because everybody that's born is born in the sin, except Jesus. He was Lord at his birth. But he still had to overcome those, sin, those temptations. See, a temptation is not a sin. But Jesus was still tempted in all likes that we were, yet without sin. He didn't have the sin nature. He wasn't born by Adam. He was born by Father God. I mean, he was the seed of God. See, that made Jesus God in the flesh. But I wasn't born God. I was born a sinner. Amen. Everybody other than Christ are born in this earth a sinner. Need to be saved. That's why Christ came. And, he, and to be saved also means to be wealthy, healthy, full of the Holy Ghost and power. That's the series God wants me to minister on until 2024. Amen. <clears throat> Focus on those because the world don't want the Christians wealthy, healthy, and full of the Holy Ghost and power. Because if you're wealthy and walking in the blessing, you won't have to go be a debtor unto a loan, unto a mortgage. Now, if you got a mortgage, don't, don't think you're underneath the curse. We're just not walking where God really wants us to walk. And, and let me tell you, I've been walking that walk for 20 plus years, and, and I'm getting there. Amen? Now, my destiny, that destiny is for me to be blessed, but depending on how I, what, give... <laughs> The measure I give is going to be measured back to me. See, I still got to operate in faith and grow in faith. To where you heard me the last two vehicles, I didn't have to pay cash. I didn't have to go get a loan. I didn't go get a brand spanking new one. But the one I got, I had the money for it. We went and bought the TV. We had the money for it. Amen. Money in the bank for it. But I've always given first. I always give God first. Even when I didn't have much. <laughs> when I learned about what God's orders were. If he wants, he wants me to be blessed, well, there's, a, there's an order to it. Bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse. Bring them into the kingdom. It's not that God needs it. He needs us to be blessed, and that's the way he set it up. Seed, time, harvest. It works in any area of your life. And after the curse came in, the devil got in there and started making us pay for things instead of just go out and grow it and have it and share it. Now the curse came in. But Jesus came. Amen. <laughs> That's why God sent these covenants. He's established these covenants so we can still be blessed in a cursed earth. Amen? It's not changed yet, but it's, it's in the process. God's going to change it one day. Jesus comes back. Amen? But until then, we can change. We can change our circumstance. Not the world, but we can change our atmosphere. Amen? I've heard, uh, I don't have a goldfish, but I think pastor's got a goldfish. I, well, I, I've had some, but I haven't had ponds. We had goldfish you put in a little bowl. And he stayed that size. But I've heard if you take a goldfish out of that atmosphere, out of that sphere, put him in something bigger, will he get bigger, Jim? He does get bigger. Well, I found out I got a big God. He's not a small God. You can't put him in a box. But I tell you what, if you put your money into the kingdom, it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. As long as you know God's a big God. Amen. <laughs> He's not poor God. He's not, anytime I turn my air, all my air conditions on, heaven don't dim. <laughs> you know, God's like, man, that boy pulling on my, he pulling on my power this morning. Nope. Don't even flicker in heaven. You know, sometimes you turn the air conditioning on, you'll see the lights flicker. Why, well, it's pulling all those amps. You can't, God don't, God. he not broke. He, not a, he don't need a breaker. <laughs> you can't trip God. 
Amen. You can't put too much, what? Puts too much air pull on him. Did he trip his breaker? He's awesome. He's got all the power you need, the Bible says. Amen. He's got all the power that we need. So just to remind you, I might try to finish up next Sunday on God wants you wealthy. He wants his people wealthy. His people. See, not everybody in the world is God and is in the family of God. You'll hear some people say that all the people in the world is God's children. That's not so. Because unless you get born again, that's when you come into the family. Now, God has created us in His image and His likeness. We're all still God's creation, but not, not, not all of us call on Him as Father. They, they're serving the devil. Amen. Jesus said, there, there's, your, your leaders and rulers, they of your Father the devil. Jesus said, because if you, if, if you love me, you'll love my, if you love my Father, you'll love me, because he's, he's of the Father. Jesus had to, you know, He gives some stern rebukes, <laughs> but it'll set you free. See, Jesus knew their hearts. He knew the heart level of where they were at. And if, and if we'll let God's word go to our heart level, man, it'll set us free. It can set us free. So God wants us free in our finances. He wants us blessed so that we can give into every good work that God calls us to do. Amen? That we don't have to think, man, well, that's a strain. No, God don't want us to be strained in, our, in any area of our life. He wants us to be blessed, to be a blessing. In Psalms 105, 37, 38, this is in the Old Covenant. The children of Israel said he brought them forth also. First of all, they had to pass over the blood covenant. Stay in the house and the death angel had to pass over, pass over, had to pass over the blood. But then after they ate that Passover, anybody that was sick, they were made whole. Any, the, what, they left that place no feeble. They got healed. They got miracles. That was a sign of the covenant. Miracles. It's still the sign of the covenant. Miracles. God confirms His Word with signs and wonders following. Amen. Right there, it's right. God's here. His miracles are here. His blessings are here. All He needs us to do is believe. Believe and you shall receive. Believe. What, what must I do to do the works of God? Believe that Jesus has already did the works. And Jesus said, as, as the works I do, you shall do. If what? If you believe, Amen. believers shall do the works. Believers shall speak with other tongues. In my name, he said, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with other tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, let me tell you, some, that Rowan's been reading some of those Pepsis I've been drinking, Diet Pepsis. He's, he's like, Dad, there's some bad stuff in here. I say, thank you, I'm a believer. <laughs> I'll drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm me. I'm trying to stay off of the sugar, but he said, those diet drinks got some bad stuff in it too. They say, well, guess what? I shall drink any deadly thing. It shall not harm me, but I'm going to try to get off of that too. And if I pick up a snake, a serpent, can't bite me. If it does bite me like you bit Paul, see, you think God just said that to be saying it? Vipers, back in their days, when you go out there in the mission field, you, there's snakes, all, deadly snakes, scorpions. They bite you, but if you know the blood is greater, Paul shook it, you'll shake it off. I'm going to Rome, shake at the deadliest snake, bid him. No deadly thing shall harm you. That's, that's a covenant promise you have. Spider bites, tick bites, it don't matter because we have a blood covenant, amen? No deadly thing shall harm you. Don't teach that to your children. Now tell them it's not good. You know, if you go out there and, you know, there's ticks out there and yeah, they do bite and they can, you know, they're bad news. But if you've got a covenant with God, tell your children the covenant. Teach so they'll have something to choose from. Do I choose to go to the doctor or do I choose? I got bit. Pull it off in Jesus' name. He hurt me. If you know that and speak that, you'll have freedom. I didn't know that as a kid about ticks and jiggers. Remember the jiggers? Man, I love blackberries, but I didn't like them jiggers you get. Make you itch. And mama put all kind of stuff on you to keep you from itching. But I... It was like, it was, it was that test, Jesus. I'm going, I'm, going for that black, I'm going for them blackberries. I don't care about the jiggers. I got to have them. And I got the jiggers too. But if I knew I had a blood covenant with God, I would have took something to cut the briars, but I wouldn't have been believing for jiggers. Amen. You got to start believing God somewhere. Come on, guys. Believe God. First the blade, then the corn, then the full ear, then the corn. Man, your faith will grow. Amen. Hallelujah. 
You know, if people just, well, nah, I don't go that way. I better get back to what I was talking about. But the Lord also, wanted, he, he's really talking about the anointing too. I heard the Lord speaking the anointing this morning as we're worshiping God, the blood. There's an anointing. I said, you're our anointed. Believers, you have the anointing on the inside of you to raise the dead. Jesus, when, when the Holy Ghost came at the River Jordan, when he was baptized in the water. Now, if you're born again, you need to, you need to get baptized in the water. Because Jesus said, do all things under right. It's, a, it's, a, it's an outward work. It's an outward confession of your faith that Jesus said to be baptized in water. To follow his example. Amen. It's a witness of what you believe what Jesus is going to do. I'm going to do what he said. So if you're born again in this church, you've never been baptized in water, let me know. We'll be glad to baptize you. The water don't save you. Jesus does. But the water is a good thing to do. The baptism is a good, I identify with Jesus. I won't do anything he did. And he said, John, John said, Jesus, you, you, you worthy. I ain't worthy to take, tie your sandal, Jesus. But Jesus said, Pop, John, do it. As unto right, it's right, John, just do it. And he baptizes Jesus in the water. And then the Holy Ghost came. I said the Holy Ghost came in the form of a bird and it anointed Jesus. The anointing came. God anointed Jesus. Whom God anointed Jesus, who went about doing good. And he, before then, he wasn't doing, he wasn't, he, Jesus was still good. He's God, but he wasn't doing the works yet. Until the anointing came. When God anointed him, then he went to the wilderness and was tempted. But if through every temptation, the word spoke because of the blood. Amen. There was a greater word. It is written. Satan, it, three times Jesus gave the devil his word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds, not from you, devil, but that didn't come from God. See, Jesus had, he was anointed. That didn't, come, that didn't speak from my father. That came from an evil source. And see, that's, the anointing is there on the inside of you to let you know that ain't good. That's evil. Amen? Sickness is evil. Poverty, come on, poverty is evil. To be in debt is evil. It's not from God. He wants you to be blessed. To be the head, not the tail, above, not beneath. And this is what happened to the children of Israel. After the Passover, after the blood, they were, not, they were, they were healthy. If there was sickness, they were healed. If there was loss in their body, in their mind, they were made whole. And then God had Pharaoh and all the people bring faith. They found favor. He said, go to your... What? Your enemies. God will bless you in the presence of your enemies. Go ask for their gold. For their... And they gave it to them and said, leave. Here, take our stuff and get out of town. Man, I'm talking about, yes, we do it. They've been serving Pharaoh for over 300 years. Now they're walking in the blood covenant, got gold. We know what happened. They went, they went and didn't listen to God, but God still said the gold is yours. You need the gold. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble a person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed. I tell you, we ain't walking in the anointed way we should until our enemies should be glad to give us what they got. That's called the transfer of the wicked, the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous. Amen. That's what happened there. It, that day's coming to where people is going to want to come to church because of all the Evil and darkness and sin is happening. They said, we got to get to the house of the Lord. How long shall we sit here till we die? There's people sitting out there in this world dying when the church is right here. Their freedom is right here. Their hope is in Christ is right here. Amen. And they're coming. We're getting ready for them. Amen. They're going to come. I said, they're going to come. Millions of Israelites, not one of them sick. This was mass healings. This was mass deliverance. The word of the Lord delivered. So let's not forget also that they left with their pocketbooks full. Amen. Full of God and full of the gold and silver of Egypt. Now God had a purpose for it. They're going to the promised land. They're going to where he's called. But see, if they would just let, Pharaoh would have just let them go, they could have kept their gold. Would, you don't think God has some other gold somewhere for them? There's another place that's got gold. The earth's full of it. Gold, coal, Coal is good when you drive a vehicle that takes gas. Coal is good when you have a, 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 a stove that uses gas. It's good. 
Nothing wrong with that. If it was bad, God wouldn't have made us mind it and have it. Now, you don't, you, you know, we've been, we've been smart. We filter it and, you know, I tell you, you don't want to get around to smoke and inhale it. That's why we put filter in all the things that we've done. It's good. But God wants us, he wants his children wealthy. Amen. Walking in, in the blessing. Exodus 12, 35 through 36, it says, And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they asked, say ask, that's going to be next Sunday, but it just keeps popping into the day. And they asked of the Egyptians, see, God said, go ask them. Oh, Lord. You know, they've been beating us for 300 years. He didn't say that. He said, go ask. Why? Heart of fear. The fear of God's already been put in their heart. All the firstborn are dead. They, all these plagues. See, but God, I talked about this. God didn't start with the worst. He didn't start with the worst plague. He didn't kill all the firstborn first. That was the last thing. God waited till the last thing. Pharaoh, went, you know, but Pharaoh just hardened his heart. And then God had to take the firstborn. You reap what you sow. Remember, Pharaoh killed all the all them Hebrew babies, drowned them, killed them, the male babies. Here comes the harvest. It says, Ask of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and clothing. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they let them have what they asked. <laughs> so if God tells you to go ask for something instead of asking for a loan, just ask for the money. <laughs> I'm just saying what the Lord, if God tells you to do something, do it. Even if it sounds foolish to you. You don't know what God's ministering to that person. <laughs> and, and favor so that they let them have what they asked and they spoiled the Egyptian. Why? Because good, God likes to spoil his children with good things. Why? Because we do what's right. We keep the covenant. See, the Lord had devastated the Egyptians, the, the land, the water, the crops, the herds, the pride, their gods, and the firstborn, and now he spoiled them of all their riches. But see, the king, King Pharaoh, and we know this, a lot of times wicked leaders that's above us, we suffer because of what they do. And when I say suffer, I'm talking about we got to pay gas prices because of what's going on. Or we got to pay oil prices. Or we got to pay high prices at the grocery market because of what? Leadership above us. But it don't change God's covenant with us. Amen? That we can find favor. I said that we can find favor. We just keep doing what's right. We just keep bringing our tithes and offerings into the kingdom. And taxes is my second thing. <laughs> and we don't have to pay it but what? Once a year or however you do it, it's taken out. It, you're paying it regardless, yeah, whether you pay it in April or during the year, right? But don't quit sowing in the kingdom. No matter how bad it gets around you, keep sowing because the Bible says Isaac sowed in the land and it was famine, and that same year he reaped a hundredfold what he sowed in a year of famine. God can make it rain water up from the bottom. Terry's land is prosperous even though if all those around him were evil, doing him wrong, doing him harm, your land would prosper. Your grass would grow. Your crops would grow. You got to believe that. And you got to work. We got we to walk according to the covenant. Don't curse our enemies. Pray for them. Bless them. That's what we're commanded, commanded to do. Pray for those that curse you, speak evil of you. They did the same thing to Jesus, but Jesus cursed not, right? He blessed them. They still had to make the choice. See, they got to make a choice. Either receive that blessing or they can sit there and continue to curse you, but that's now that they're in the Lord's hands. Amen. Whatever he decides, you know, and his, 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 there's mercy and grace. That's what we got to minister to him, mercy and grace. So God wants us wealthy. Another uh, familiar scripture here in Proverbs 13, 22. God wants his children wealthy. Say wealthy. You need to be thinking about wealthy just as good as healthy. That's a good word. God wants you to prosper. Wealthy, you can say it either way. Prosper. Do better. Proverbs 13, 22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. That's wealth. That's wealthy. If I can, and I got four. 
So I definitely need to believe. Be, be, if you got four, you need to be believing for more. If you want, if each child, each child, I should be able to leave an inheritance to my children, to their children's children. Four times how many ever kids they have. You know what? That can be a it could be a multitude, right? Well, I don't see Jesus having a problem feeding the multitude with what he had. But what he had wasn't enough. But he didn't stop there. He 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 looked up to heaven, and he blessed it. In the same way God can bless your bread and bless your water and multiply, he can bless your finances and cause them to prosper. Amen? Your investment, he could tell you to go invest in some investments over here and God will prosper those. And then he'll tell you, now take that money out. Amen? Listen to the however, the Lord, however you invest your money. But remember, as God, if you remember, it's his. He's given me every good thing. Invest it. Amen? So this is saying a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. He don't know it. That sinner, he he don't know it. But we we need to know it. (laughs) Now we're not trying, you know, we're not not having that attitude of seeing that sinner and just saying, well, I'm going to get you. I'm getting your money. I'm getting, no, that ain't ain't what he's talking about. They just don't understand that the, the, the sinner man, unless he repents, He's never going to do good. It's going to, it's going to fail somewhere. You can have all the money in your relationship. You're on your fourth wife. That's, that's poverty. Come on, that's poverty. If you're on your fourth wife and you've had two kids times four, just a minimum, how many kids is that? Eight kids. You better be having some money. <laughs> Come on. But if you can have one wife, I got four kids. So, you know, that's still... But then you have four wives and she wants you. You just can't see. You can get into a curse. It's not a curse to be blessed and have kids. It's a curse to, to not be married and, and have kids and, and be divorced. You get underneath the curse. And then you get underneath. You can probably have child support and I want this and she wants that. But see, that's not God's best. That's why he said, but you understand what I'm saying. But God still loves us and he can still bless us. However it works out, just get him, keep him first, first place in everything. Amen? 3 John 2. Talking about God wants His children wealthy. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may as prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee even as you walk in the truth. So if I don't tell you that God wants you wealthy and healthy, I'm not telling you the truth. John's telling us the truth. I am beloved. I wish above all things. This is his wish for us. Do you want to fulfill the wish that John the Beloved had for the children? Amen. Let me tell you, John went through hell on this earth being a witness for Jesus. But he says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. What a great truth and what a great insight into the heart of God who inspired this word. And see, that's where you got to start first. Do you believe this is God? Breathe, this word in here, the, the word is God breathed, God inspired. There's preachers saying, the preachers preaching this, they're saying, you know, the Old Testament's not rev- relevant for today. Just tear that book out, that covenant out. That's a false teaching. Can I get an amen? You got to teach the whole word. Don't add to it, don't take away from it. Now, you can comment on it, but don't add to it. Don't add your, don't add your word to it. You know what I mean? Don't add, where God said this and he didn't say it, that's adding to now you can, you know, you can express it differently what he said, but don't take it away. Amen. <clears throat> so what great truths we can really we can we can't really prosper outwardly if we're not prospering inwardly. That your soul prosper, prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. If you don't get in the Word and study, if you don't come to church, I'm telling you, you're not going to prosper outwardly because you're not going to be prospering inwardly. Taking this word, chewing on it, meditating on it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 112, 1 3, and I'm going to close with this today. What were we doing this morning? First thing, praise, praise ye the Lord. We're praising the Lord. We ought to come in praising Him, and we didn't leave praising. No matter if the sermon was 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, three hours. Paul, remember Paul, man, Paul, he wouldn't let you loose unless you'd been here 24 hours. Paul had a 
24-7, he was always preaching. I'm talking about the Apostle Paul. He'd had them all-night prayer meetings. I mean, we, there's a couple of those written, <laughs> written for us to read. One, one brother got sleepy, fell out the window, died, dead, hit the road. Now, we not that high, but they was high. They might have been three, four stories. Paul said, he ain't dying in my meeting, went in there and laid, my right Jim laid his body on him. Said, you ain't dying, breathe. And, and the Bible says believers shall raise the dead. I don't, I, he probably went back on the first story and said, don't let me fall asleep again. <laughs> Paul ain't going to let you, Jesus ain't going to let you die listening to the word. It was a long service, but he said, uh-uh, get back up. Paul said, I ain't done. I ain't finished yet. That was just the first closing. <laughs> Come on, it's, good. it's okay to laugh in church too. That was the first closing. <laughs> Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. I said delight. Now, I love sunny delight orange juice. I used to. It's got a lot more sugar. I don't, I don't drink it like I used to. I had a message I never preached. It's called sunny delight. God likes. I have to pull that up. He delights to give us the desires of our heart. Amen. It pleases the Lord when we get blessed. That's what, he gives us the desires of a heart and it pleases the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. But pastor, they ain't, my, my children are not looking too mighty. Keep sowing the word. Keep praising the Lord that they will be mighty. Amen. Don't say they're going to be this, tra you know what I mean? Don't speak evil of them. Speak good of them. Speak what God says. God says you'll see the man that, is, that fears the Lord and praises the Lord. And delight, del I delight in the Lord. I delight in his commandments. So the Bible says, my children shall mighty, they'll be on the earth. And I'll just, well, I'm not going to say that yet. I'll say that after. Wealth, uh-oh, there's that word again. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Y'all hear that? That's the man that what? Loves the word, loves God, loves Jesus. You can't love Jesus and Jesus not love you and want to, and want to bless you financially. That's his will for you, to bless you financially. Amen. Wealthy. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. If you do things right, Jesus' righteousness endures forever. Jesus did everything right. Listen to the, the Good News translation. Praise the Lord. Happy is the person who honors the Lord, who takes pleasure in obeying His commands. The good man's children will be powerful in the land. His descendants will be blessed. Not they shall be, will be blessed. If I do what's right before the Lord, my children will be blessed. God will see to it. Now, they still got to make some decisions, but when they make them right decisions, blessings are chasing them down to overtake them. Amen? Don't never give up on them. Amen? Never. The same desire I have for the Lord, I, I pray my children have that same burning desire. Keep praying that for them, and you'll see it. Amen? Amen? It might, might be longer or shorter sometimes. It depends. Amen? But just keep praying that promise. They themselves will be wealthy. They themselves will be wealthy. So that's God's desire for them too. And their good deeds will last forever. I tell you what, there was, you, can, you can read in the Bible, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good kings. and We can read in the Old Testament, there's a lot of wicked kings. I said there was a lot of good and there's a lot of wicked. You know, if Saul, if Saul would have did what God had called him to do, we never would have heard of the sure mercies of David. It never would have been King David. I'm sure God would have used David somewhere else, but Saul was God's first choice. But what did Saul do? God gives us a free will. You can either receive the blessing of the Lord or you can reject it. You can receive me when I'm talking and preaching about being wealthy. You can receive it or reject it, but it ain't going to change God's love to you, towards you, toward anybody. Jesus says, follow me. Jesus is not stopping. If somebody doesn't follow him, he's going on to Capernaum. Amen. Or he's going on to Jericho. Or he's, wherever, God, wherever the Father sent Jesus, Jesus said, follow me, Peter. 
If Peter would have not followed, Jesus would have found somebody else that would have followed him and been his disciple. But Jesus went and prayed, and he saw in the Spirit. He knew who to call and who not to call. He, gee, that's why they followed, because Jesus had the will of the Father. And the Father knew when Jesus went and prayed, he knew the twelve he was going to pick, and one of them was going to be a devil. One of them was going to be possessed by Satan, but that's the one God chose. And God did, just didn't pick on Judas. Judas had already decided in his heart because all, God gives us free choice. Judas was not just born to reject God. He had a choice. He, why would you think God would let Judas, who, who God knew, listen to this. A lot of times people take this thing that God has already decided who's going to be saved and who won't be saved. That's a lie. God has given us a choice. And for you to say, and for me to say that God had somebody born to reject him, that's not God. Jude, God let Judas, who was a thief, walk with Jesus. Jesus choose him for three and a half years and see the glory of God, see the mercy of God, see the love of God. And Judas still decided in his heart to reject that. Three, that's, over, that's over 900 days of walking with God. And seeing the miracles and still, see, and still rejecting. And there was no more salvation for Judas. Why? He trampled the Son of God under his feet and the devil. And then it said, Jesus, the devil entered him, even at the Lord's Supper. There's people out there that will be that hard and reject God. And I'm God, I'm, I'm, I thank God I'm not the one in my heart that knows it. Who will and who won't. But see, God still gives everybody a choice. And we have a choice to believe that God wants you wealthy and healthy and full of the Holy Ghost and power. Amen. And you got to choose that. You got to receive it and let Him do it. Amen. There's nothing you got to do other than believe and don't let any unbelief get in there. Keep the unbelief out. Keep the light in and the darkness can't come in. Amen. Keep believing and keep speaking and you'll see it. You'll have it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for making us healthy and wealthy and for sending the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Father, we thank you, Lord, for anointing Jesus who went about doing good. Lord, Jesus has done us good. Lord, he, is, he, 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 he fulfilled every, he dotted every I, crossed every T. Lord, he gave his life for us. Jesus, thank you for being the sacrifice. Lord, you, you took all the wealth that you had and you became poor. You gave up your life. You, you gave just your wealth and you laid, you became poor on that cross so we could physically, physically be wealthy here on this earth. Not only me, but my children and my children's children, Father. And Lord, help us to walk in that covenant, to not see ourselves lacking, but to see ourselves blessed in every area of our lives. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for the anointing. I thank you for the anointing on the inside of us that will rise up and speak to us and show us things by the Spirit, Lord. Lord, if it has to be in figures, <laughs> digits, Lord, show us. Lord, you said that you said you give us the you put godly desires, Lord. Lord David said, Is, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? When he went to Saul, he said, what shall be given to the man that will stand up against this giant? He'd be given a wife and a kingdom. he have all these things, Lord. We thank you for the things. That we have a covenant with you, Lord. We have a covenant. And that covenant is not based on what I do. It's based on what you did, Lord. In the beginning. You promised us every good and every perfect gift that comes down from the Father of lights above. And Lord, we're your children. And I just speak blessings over your children, Lord. I speak blessings over, over your children in this church. And if they're struggling in their finances, Father, I just thank you right now by the word, by the spirit, Lord. I just curse debt right now in the name of Jesus. Any debts in our people right now in this place, I command them to be Free from that right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, as we walk in the covenant, Lord, that the devil has no place. 
He has no place in our people's finances or in this church's finances, Lord. Lord, and what you've called us to do, if there's any restrictions in our church, Lord, that's restricting us from doing what you've called us to do, Lord, I break that right now in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, we won't see ourselves as a small church. We'll see ourselves as a victorious church, and we won't limit you to what you can do in this place. That, Lord, we are a power. We're your church, the victorious church. And whatever you've called Word of Faith Worship Center to do, Lord, Lord, thank you for giving me the vision to do it. I received the vision to do it. And I thank you, Lord, for sending the people, all the people, all the children, all the ministry that we need to get it done. Whatever you called us to do, Lord, and I know it's to preach and teach the Word of Faith. And you said you'd take my voice and make it a bigger influence to the world by radio, by TV, and Lord, we receive it. And thank you for it, Father. So I call your people wealthy. I call this people healthy. I call this people full of the Holy Ghost and power. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. That's the vision. Thank you for joining us today at Word of Faith Worship Center. I pray God's grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then according to Romans 10, 8 through 10, the word is nigh unto thee in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. We would ask you today to simply say, yes, I believe this, and I say yes to Jesus. Now, if you just received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we would encourage you to get into a good church. Our church is located at 757 Harris Street, Northwest, Concord, North Carolina, 28025. And you can also find us on the internet at wordoffaithworshipcenter.org or wofwc.org. We hope to see you soon. Blessings.